these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. The great proverb about knowing where you came from to know where you're going is very true. A people who don't know their history will remain lost. As the signs of times appear before us, it's important for the people of the Most High to increase their knowledge. Understanding our present era is the only way to know where we're going. Additionally, how to serve our Creator in the Spirit and in truth. Having the background information about the first woman and man is just as important about knowing the real Messiah. The first man and woman the Most High created with his bare hands are the only ones who experience living in the garden as well as living on earth. I'm sure Adam and Eve transferred vital information about the Most High and their altered reality with their children to help them live a life that is pleasing in the sight of the Most High. Traditions and culture heritage are passed down from generation to generation. Many family secrets, remedies, and rituals are passed down from the parents to the children to preserve them. I'm certain Adam and Eve passed down wisdom and culture customs to their children that the synagogue of Satan is withholding from the public. It was the custom of our people for the leader of every household gather his children to bless them and transfer prophecies and customs to their successor and their children. Adam, Seth, and our father Jacob, the progenitor of the Israelite bloodline, observed this tradition before they transitioned. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Adam and Eve are the first humans. Our traditions and customs will begin with them. The way they live their lives impacted the world. In addition, shift the way we live until redemption comes for the people of the Most High. The fact that the Bible briefly narrates Adam and Eve's journey make their existence in this world insignificant. Adam and Eve's complete journey should have been included in the Bible. The beginning is just as important as the ending. Satan tried to destroy Adam and his seed because he is jealous of Adam. He was upset that the Most High offered salvation to Adam and did not do the same for him. Because of this, Satan waged war with Adam and his seed. But now, O Adam, by reason of thy fall, thou art under my rule, and I am king over thee. Because thou hast hearkened to me, and hast transgressed against thy God, neither will there be any deliverance from my hands until the day promised thee by thy God. Again he said, And as much as we do not know the day agreed upon with thee by thy God, nor the hour in which thou shalt be delivered, for that reason will we multiply war and murder upon thee and thy seed after thee. But Satan, the hater of all good, thought within himself, whereas God has promised salvation to Adam by covenant, and that he would deliver him out of all the hardship that have befallen him, but has not promised me by covenant, and will not deliver me out of my hardship. Nay, since he has promised him, that he should make him and his seed dwell in the kingdom in which I once was, I will kill Adam. The earth shall be rid of him and shall be left to me alone, so that when he is dead, he may not have any seed left to inherit the kingdom that shall remain my own realm. 
God will then be in want of me and he will restore me to it with my hosts. The way the world treats black people is confirmation to Satan and his followers wishing to harm the seed of Adam. Throughout history, black people have been persecuted by Satan and the other species of mankind. Everywhere they go, the seed of the fallen comes to persecute them. The life the indigenous black people are living on earth confirm what Satan and his host desire to do against Adam and his seed. Satan wants the earth for himself and his host. With the Most High revealing the hidden things, we are getting to the root to the enmity between good and evil, righteousness against unrighteousness. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. The hidden things is giving the indigenous black people the behind the scenes view to all the evil that has befallen them from generation to generation. When you lack knowledge, you perish. Once you gain wisdom and understanding, you are properly equipped for battle. Israelites, it is important to look not on what you can see, but the unseen. The other species of mankind would say, go back to Africa. Many indigenous black people are returning to Africa just to be persecuted by Satan and his hosts in the form of missionaries and nonprofit organizations, as well as the colonizers who believe they own every land on earth. Satan and his hosts will continue to persecute Adam's descendants until the end comes. After this, Satan called to his hosts, all which came to him and said unto him, O our Lord, what wilt thou do? He then said unto them, Ye know that this Adam, whom God created out of the dust, is he who has taken our kingdom. Come, let us gather together and kill him, or hurl a rock at him and Eve, and crush them under it. Your eyes have seen the good he has taken from you, and in truth he has opened your eyes. And you have seen the garden in which ye were with me, and ye have also seen the evil that has come upon you from Satan. But as to the Godhead, he cannot give it you, neither fulfill his speech to you. Nay, he was bitter against you and your seed that will come after you. Israelites, the mistreatment we receive in the beast system is from Satan and his hosts who are bitter against the seed of Adam, whom the Most High has granted salvation. Satan's hosts consist of the fallen angels, unclean spirits, the marine world, and human followers. Despite of the lack of information given to us about Adam and Eve, the Most High gave them mercy and continued to protect them and their seed from Satan's wrath. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. The church preach heavily on the Most High loving the world and saving the world. They use the doctrine of the Most High dying to save his creation from sin to fill the seats in the various religious faith. When it comes to Adam and Eve, mercy and grace is not extended to them. The church and religion made Adam and Eve appear to be unrepentant sinners. Religion made it seem as if the Most High cast away Adam and Eve, just like the church make it seem as if the Most High put away his chosen people. The spiritual Israel doctrine was created in religion to replace the people the Most High called by his name. The Most High said he would never leave nor forsake his people. The Most High never replaced his chosen people with anyone else. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. Watch ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets, and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 
7,000 men, who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then at this present time also, there is a remnant, according to the election of grace. The Most High always have a remnant. Repeatedly, the Most High reassure his people that he will save them and make many promises to them. The workers of iniquity in high places created multiple doctrines about spiritual Israel to replace the original chosen people with the imposters the world accepted as the people of the Most High, as well as indoctrinating the Gentiles into the abomination called religion via the grafted in doctrine. Religion is famous for indoctrinating the people of the Most High with numerous doctrines of devils to steal from them. Every doctrine that comes from religion is to benefit and uplift the seed of the fallen. Every scripture and historical facts that confirm the indigenous black people as the people of the Most High or that put a positive image on the indigenous black people, the children of Satan go out of their way to discredit regardless of the facts. I believe religion slander Adam and Eve just as they crucify and replace the Messiah that came in the Father's name with a false Messiah because Adam and Eve is the progenitor to the group of people the world labeled black. Because the beast system love black culture but hate black people, the synagogue of Satan has no problem degrading and disrespecting Adam and Eve. Just like many people from the other species of mankind do not respect nor value the indigenous black people. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. When has Satan and his hosts ever followed the commandments of the Most High? We cannot expect his children to honor the statutes, commandments, and laws of the Most High. The wicked among us are doing what they are designed to do, transgress. The Bible briefly mentioned Adam and Eve's journey. There is a lot more that have taken place in Adam and Eve's lives that the Bible failed to disclose. Instead of respecting the first man and woman, many slandered them to uplift the seed of the fallen, the beast system used to replace the original people made in the image and likeness of the Most High. Many people in religion and in the awakening do not know that Adam and Eve repented of their sins and did everything that they could to secure their descendants' future as well as their own. Then Adam and Eve took stones and placed them in the shape of an altar, and they took leaves from the trees outside the garden, with which they wiped from the face of the rock the blood they had spilled. But that which had dropped on the sand, they took together with the dust wherewith it was mingled and offered it upon the altar as an offering unto God. Then Adam and Eve stood under the altar and wept, thus entreating God, forgive us of our trespass and our sin and look upon us with thine eye of mercy. For when we were in the garden, our praises and our hymns went up before thee without ceasing. Then the merciful God, good and lover of men, look upon Adam and Eve and upon their blood, which they had held up as an offering unto him, without an order from him for so doing, but he wondered at them and accepted their offerings. And God sent from his presence a bright fire that consumed their offering. He smelt the sweet savor of their offering and showed them mercy. Then came the word of God to Adam and said unto him, O Adam, as thou hast shed thy blood, so will I shed my own blood when I become flesh of thy seed. And as thou didst die, O Adam, so also will I die. And as thou didst build an altar, so also will I make for thee an altar on the earth. And as thou didst offer thy blood upon it, so also will I offer my blood upon an altar on the earth. And as thou didst sue for forgiveness through thy blood, so also will I make my blood forgiveness of sins and blot out transgressions in it. The Most High accepted Adam and Eve's sacrifice. Because they shed their blood, salvation came to us. The awakening is infested with so-called woke people who are spreading the lies started in religion about Adam and Eve. Instead of going beyond what they can see and what the beast culture indoctrinate them with, they choose to place a spotlight on the iniquities of Adam and Eve. They go as far as to support doctrines that slander their own people. 
I don't know what they believe they are accomplishing with slanderous doctrines that are based on lies. How can you be so-called woke and claim the Most High has awakened you out of darkness into his marvelous light and your heart is filled with hate towards your own people? What does it profit the indigenous black people to slander their own? What reward will you receive for doing the devil's work? We must recognize our own transgressions and repent from our sins. We have to remove the beam out of our eyes first before opening our mouths to slander the prophets of old and the anointed the Most High choose to show himself strong through. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. Israelites, let the Most High be the one to reward you by doing his will. Do not seek rewards from the beast system. It is important for everyone to know that Adam and Eve were created, not born. With the Most High creating Adam first and Eve second, no one is able to alter or duplicate his original creation. The synagogue of Satan spent their entire existence trying to counterfeit the Most High's creation. The closest they have gotten to duplicating the Most High's human species is the seed of the fallen, as well as living AIs, the tares, and modified organisms. So far, all of Satan's attempt to redesign the human species with his lesser beings failed. None of his counterfeits can compare to the Most High's original design of the human species. The DNA of the original people remain unmatched until this day. Despite of all the infiltration that has taken place in the human population, the original people's DNA remains supreme. The scripture said we are fearfully and wonderfully made. For thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. The difference between the descendants of Adam and Adam and Eve, we were born and obtained our human suit via our mother's womb. Because we were born instead of created like Adam and Eve, the kingdom of darkness gained an opportunity to infiltrate the birthing process to create hybrids. That is how the watchers were able to create children with the daughters of men. The Most High created all of his creatures one time. He gave his creatures the ability to multiply. The Most High created Adam and Eve, and out of them came the rest of the human population. The Most High did not create the other species of mankind. The existence of any other species of men outside of the original creation of the Most High comes from the imagination of the creatures the Most High created. By now, we all should know that the fallen angels and the human species transgressed and gave birth to another species of mankind. And it came to pass when the children of men had multiplied that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. And the angels, the children of the heaven, saw and lusted after them and said to one another, Come. Let us choose us wives from among the children of men, and beget us children. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Sin is the foundation to the other species of mankind. That is why they are wicked. The Most High destroyed the abominable race of giants via the flood. Also, the Most High will eliminate forever all the subspecies that came from the abominable union between the daughters of men and the fallen angels, as well as the wicked of his people at the final battle between good and evil, the battle of Armageddon. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven, and devoured them. 
Some people are having a hard time processing that the seed of the fallen exists because the scripture said the Most High destroyed them with the flood. Let me say this. If the Bible said in Genesis that there were giants before the flood and also after the flood, the word of the Most High is revealing to us that the seed of the fallen continue to exist after the flood. Throughout the scriptures, our people encounter the giants and the various subspecies from the seed of the fallen, like the Denisovans and the Neanderthals after the flood. Why is it difficult to believe the seed of the fallen still exists? Some of our people are married to them and have children by them. A lot of indigenous black people prefer the seed of the fallen over their own kind. How are the principalities among us ruling the nations in our presence today if the seed of the fallen don't exist? Don't be deceived. There were giants in the earth in those days and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. And now the giants who are produced from the spirits and flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth, and on the earth shall be their dwelling. And the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle, and work destruction on earth and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst and cause offenses. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the women, because they have proceeded from them. And Uriel said to me, Here shall stand the angels who have connected themselves with women, and their spirits, assuming many different forms, are defiling mankind and shall lead them astray into sacrificing to demons as gods. Here shall they stand till the day of the great judgment in which they shall be judged till they are made an end of. The scriptures said the earth is the seat of the fallen's dwelling place. They can take many forms to deceive the children of men. Not all who appear human are human. As the living descendants of Adam and Eve, we are their direct duplicate. Because we come from them, we are just like them. The indigenous black people have a different appearance from the other species of mankind. It takes two of the same kind to duplicate itself. Whenever two different species crossbreed, a hybrid is produced from the union. You cannot produce an apple from an orange and apple combination. In order for Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply, their descendants must continue to procreate within to continue Adam's bloodline. The other species of mankind's genetic makeup consists of animal DNA, the fallen angel's DNA, and human DNA. And all the others together with them took unto themselves wives, and each chose for himself one, and they began to go in unto them and to defile themselves with them. And they taught them charms and enchantments and the cutting of roots and made them acquainted with plants. And they became pregnant and they bare great giants whose height was 3,000 L's. And they began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish and to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. If you conduct a thorough research on the Neanderthals, you will learn that they are classified under the animal kingdom as well as a subspecies in the human species. The scripture did say the seed of the fallen sin against the animals that would confirm their animal DNA. Today, the other species of mankind are successful in transplanting animal organs into themselves. Who in their right mind would transplant animal organs into the body the Most High said is wonderfully made? The scripture said, all flesh are not the same. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another the other species of mankind is finding success in transplanting animal organs into themselves because their genetic makeup consists of animal dna 
The original people do not have animal DNA. Therefore, their bodies will reject the animal organs. Most of us are lactose intolerant. We cannot consume animal milk like the other species of mankind. Parasites are comfortable living in their fur, just as parasites live in their pet's fur. Lice is a problem that is unique to them. The truth is staring at us. We must open our eyes to see. We are not the same, just as the scripture said, all flesh are not the same. The Most High designed the first man and woman to resemble him in every way. The scripture said the Most High created Adam from the dust of the ground. After he created Adam, he breathed into his nostril the breath of life. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. After the Most High breathed the breath of life into Adam, he became a living being. Since the Most High did not breathe the breath of life into the hybrids, how are they living? What power is controlling them to make them appear to be living souls? Remember, principalities are ruling the strongest nations in this world. Principalities are high-level demonic beings. Satan has the ability to transform himself. The Bible did say the Antichrist, the men of sin, will be able to do great miracles to deceive the children of men. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. The Bible said the Most High put Adam into a deep sleep while he create Eve. Unlike Adam, who was created from the dust of the ground, Eve was created via Adam's rib. Then at the end of the third hour of that Friday, O Lord, thou did cause a slumber and a sleep to come over me, and I slept and was overwhelmed in sleep. Then thou did draw a rib out of my side and created after my own similitude and image. Then I awoke. And when I saw her and knew who she was, I said, This is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Henceforth she shall be called woman. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. The Bible does not tell us how long Adam slept while the Most High made Eve. The book of Adam and Eve reveal Adam saying to the Most High in prayer, he did not know how long he was sleeping when the Most High made Eve. Her beginnings is unknown to him. All that he know is that while he was in a deep sleep, Eve was created. Once he awake from his sleep, the Most High brought Eve to him. It was of thy good will, O God, that thou broughtest a slumber and a sleep over me, and that thou didst forthwith bring Eve out of my side until she was out, so that I did not see how she was made, neither could I witness, O my Lord, how awful and great are thy goodness and glory. The scriptures doesn't tell us how long after Eve was created, the Most High brought her to him. What the scripture did say, the Most High named them both Adam. Before the male Adam named the female Adam Eve, the Most High called them both Adam. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. The Most High gave the male Adam the job of naming his creation. Whatever name Adam gave the animals, that was their name. The Most High did not create the female Adam, Eve, right away. The Most High created Adam, placed him in the garden. The Most High commanded Adam to take care of the garden. The Most High made known to Adam the laws for the garden. The Most High commanded him not to eat from the tree of good and evil. Eve was not created yet when the Most High commanded Adam not to eat from the tree of good and evil. Moreover, when thou commandest me regarding the tree, I was neither to approach nor to cat thereof. 
Eve was not with me. Thou hadst not yet created her, neither hadst thou yet taken her out of my side, nor had she yet heard this order from thee. I am not excusing Eve's transgressions. Although she was not present when the Most High gave Adam the instructions, in the eyes of the Most High, they are one. The Bible revealed to us that when Satan inserted himself into the serpent to deceive Eve, Eve was knowledgeable about the laws of the garden. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Before Satan deceived Eve, the Most High, or Adam, instruct her concerning the tree of good and evil. That is how she was able to say to the serpent that they were forbidden to eat from the tree. After Adam received the laws for the garden, the Most High brought the animals to Adam to name. It wasn't until Adam noticed he did not have a counterpart like all the animals, the Most High put him to sleep and made the female Adam. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him an help meet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature... That was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found an helpmeet for him. Before Adam officially named the woman Eve, the Most High called her Adam as well. In the eyes of the Most High, they are one. When Eve sinned, Adam sinned also. Just as our ancestors sinned and was judged, we was judged with them. The scripture said when a man and a woman marry, the two become one. The way a man and a woman become one is through sex. Israelites, this is why sexual immorality is a sin that has an everlasting effect on a person. Sex equals marriage in the eyes of the Most High. Every time you're intimate with a person, you are getting married. Sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Satan has done a phenomenal job in dividing what the Most High made one, in the beast culture. Today, the male Adam and the female Adam hate each other. How did the people of the Most High get to this sad state? The woman is a reflection of the man. And of thy good will, O Lord, thou made us both with bodies of a bright nature, and thou made us two, one, and thou gave us thy grace and did fill us with praises of the Holy Spirit, that we should be neither hungry nor thirsty, nor know what sorrow is, nor yet faintness of heart, neither suffering, fasting, nor weariness. The first name Adam gave Eve was woman. That was the name he called her when the Most High brought her to him. Adam explained because she was taken from the man, she should be called woman. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. The scriptures call Eve woman until the fall and the Most High judged them. You won't find the name Eve in the scriptures until Genesis chapter 3. After Adam and the woman transgressed the laws of the Most High, Adam changed her name to Eve. Eve is defined as the mother to all living. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Israelites, do you notice the name patterns in the scriptures? 
Our ancestors were particular with the names they chose for their children. Once you transgress or the Most High use a person for his glory, he would change their names. The Most High did this to Jacob, our father. The Most High changed his name to Israel. He did the same to countless other prophets. Presently in the beast culture, Satan has changed the name to every bloodline in the Bible. He replaced bloodline with race. The other species of mankind made sure to change our ancestors' names when they were scattered to the four corners of this world. By changing our names, it caused our people to forget their history and legacy. Today, we are operating under the colonizers' names. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. Because Adam and Eve were created beings, they are the blueprint. It was the Most High who created Adam and Eve with his hands. He created them in his own image and likeness. We know for sure that no modification was done to Adam and Eve until the fall. The book of Adam and Eve revealed that Adam was created with the elements. And after their prayers, Adam began to entreat God, saying, O my Lord, my God, and my Creator, thou did command the four elements to be gathered together, and they were gathered together by thine order. Then thou spread thy hand, and did create me out of one element, that of dust of the earth. And thou did bring me into the garden at the third hour on a Friday, and did inform me of it in the cave. Satan saw how the Most High made Adam, but he was not able to interfere with the creation of the first two humans. Adam and Eve appearance is the blueprint for the human species. The only way Satan was able to interfere with the appearance of the human species is when the Watchers procreate with Adam and Eve's children. The only modification that took place in Adam and Eve is when the bright nature was taken away from them. But when we came into this strange land, pure praise was no longer ours, nor righteous prayer, nor understanding hearts, nor sweet thoughts, nor just counsels, no long discernment, nor upright feelings. Neither is our bright nature left us, but our body is changed from the similitude in which it was at first when we were created. Adam is the father to the human species. Eve is the mother to all living. Although Adam is the first man, he is not the father to all living. Israelites, the beginning is just as important as the ending. You have to know where you came from to know where you're going. Stay tuned for part two. Our Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Thou showest loving kindness unto thousands and recompensest the iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them. The great, the mighty God, the Lord of hosts, is his name. Great in counsel and mighty in work. For thine eyes are open upon all the ways of the sons of men, to give everyone according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings.